if I could respond to that. Oh, no, go so ahead. I, in my experience, uh, Council Member, the, the the getting together is really at the MPO level. So right. at the at the MPO level, at the metropolitan okay, well. planning organization level. So so Contra Costa gets together with the San Francisco Bay counties, and and San Joaquin uh, <laughs> Cog is its own cog. Sacramento is its own cog. So. I okay, you, you look at so, the Bay Area. So the Bay, we, we tend to be, I think in Contra Costa, we tend to be more inward looking towards the yeah. Bay than, than east towards the Delta. But the 239 Tri-Link project has, has really made a difference in that. We're now, the three of us, the three counties, Alameda, San Joaquin, and Contra Costa, are meeting regularly to talk about this corridor. I, I think to speak to your point, I, I to my knowledge at least, you know, given, uh, like I kind of discussed earlier, there's a number of, of uh, governmental entities from a transportation perspective, and to my knowledge at least, they haven't all gotten together to look at the Delta as a region, right. regardless of political, you know, right. the, the political boundaries that, that we operate within. Is a good idea? It sure does sound like a good idea. Phil and then Larry. Uh, Mr. Hobson, let, let me try to draw you back because this question is the one that concerns me. How can we get a perspective on a region when you have different agencies with different jurisdictional boundaries and so on? It, I'm looking for kind of just rules of thumb. I assume whether you use a miles-driven, person-per-mile calculation or whatever else you guys do in traffic volume, that most of the traffic runs on interstate freeways in some calculations. Well, now, I course, yeah. Is it 70 percent, 80 percent? Is there a, I'm not holding you to a figure, but just a ballpark. Well, I, yeah, I, I couldn't. It just depends on, on the area and the region. No, it would, okay, and, and take, so, take this area and this region we're talking about now. Yeah, you know, I couldn't. I, I don't have the data in terms of specifically to be able to respond to that. But, yeah, the majority of the, the traffic, the, the vehicle trips, are on the state highway system, but but just like he was saying on the county roads, I mean that's just, that well, plays a major role as well. No, I I understand. Any road that goes in front of any farm, any house, any business right. is the most important. I, I got that. But as you try to do planning for an area, the greatest potential for interruption and arguably interference with traffic flows, commercial and and personal, would be on the interstate highway system or the state highway system, right? Correct. Okay, and I'm just guessing just for my own purposes, not asking you to verify it, but tell me if I'm outrageous, that, that somewhere between 50 and 80 percent of passenger miles would probably go on average per year through the state, the, the interstate and the state highway system. Yeah, the, the majority of okay. trips. Are weird. Um, I was puzzled on, on your chart with at least one thing. I can understand why State Route 99 is a, is categorized as a uh, major trucking route. I got 80, uh, 80 and 205. Is Highway 160 comparable in terms of truck volume to those others? Or is it? Comparable to, to 99. Yeah, you've got asterisks next to uh, all four of them. You call them, this is on slide page five. Right. Uh, you call them major trucking routes. and it, Well, the, I... I, I, the point there being on 160, it gets a, you know, during the, it depends on the season, but, yeah, you sure. know, fair amount, of given, given, you know, comparing a, a, a freeway uh, to a two-lane, essentially rural road is, is kind of difficult in terms of, and so the, the variables, you know, it's going to be different in terms okay. of what constitutes. Uh, All right. so, so am I correct in assuming that of the four areas that have, uh, are involved here, 160 has less, significantly less volume even during heavy harvest season. Huge, okay. yes. All right. Um, this is outside the, uh, today's hearing, but you have had experience at Caltrans with all kinds of stuff. I fly, I-5 gets flooded largely from creeks backing up down mm -hmm. in Sacramento County, yep. southern Sacramento County, a little bit in San Joaquin County. 99 has different kinds of problems. My impression is neither 5 nor 99 are likely to be impacted by major levee breaks in the primary zone of the delta because they're to the to the east. Right. 
Okay. And you have alternative ways of moving traffic around, imperfect as it is, right? And everybody yells at you when you say I five's closed. You got to go down ninety nine or whatever. Exactly. I yeah. mean, you can plan the best you can, but it just when the event happens, you just have to deal with it. I mean, what do you do with four and twelve, which I assume we would call major east west connectors from a delta perspective? Um, if, if there was to be uh, an interruption, an interruption due to there, flooding. yeah. I mean, the line, you know, the, the, the route yeah. from Rio Vista to Lodi right. is substantially below water level on, I guess, about half of its, mm -hmm. its distance. Uh, sure. And if I remember correctly, Caltrans told us that they're only required to do a 50-year flood protection level for, uh, for those routes. At least that's what Will Kempton told me a couple of years ago when he was director. Mm -hmm. um, what are the alternatives there? Well, I can tell you when Caltrans has closed Highway 12 specifically for heavy maintenance, and they usually do it for about, I think it's a week or so every year, uh, it tends to be in the spring, uh, is they will have alternate detours up to, I think, uh, essentially Interstate 80 and back down 160. So um, I think there's just some, some limitations on length of vehicles right. on 160, but other than that, that's, that's the uh, detour. Uh, to Highway 4, I don't recall them closing Highway 4 like they do 12 every year. So I, you know, wouldn't... Uh, 12 wouldn't is the more, the more potentially, uh, the, the, area, the route potentially more subject to either flooding or repair delays. Yeah, and I don't know the volumes, but my sense is that the volumes are greater on 12 than on Highway 4. Oh, I would so, think so, yeah. 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 Which might be changed if Contra Costa County gets its uh, connector, right? Got it. Okay, thank you. All right, Larry? Just two things. One is I think the biggest problem we have is that the gas tax was the way everything kind of got funded, and then that just didn't meet the demand that was out there because you had aging infrastructure, aging bridges, and more demand, and the gas tax just hasn't been maintained. So then we went to the self-help county things with the SACOGs and, the, and ARCOG and Contra Costa's transit. So, I mean, we're, we're playing catch-up. And so when, when Mike mentioned, you know, that we've got $200 million, yeah, that would be if we made every road perfect in our county. Well, we're never going to have the money, or will we allocate it in that direction? The question is, is how do you meet the demand for the safety on those bridges and the, and the, and the demand for the, you know, Phil's mentioning that if, you know, if you fix the road or add a couple lanes, then all you did is basically we fill the lanes up. It's build it and they will use it kind of thing. And the trick is, is, is I guess from, you know, how does the Delta Stewardship Count, you know, Commission help us here? It, hopefully, it's not we're from the government and we're here to help, kind of help, <clears throat> if you know what I mean. It's more like how do we help coordinate that, and maybe that's with the early implementation that then gets further out there. And maybe to answer the judge's question, if you people ever talked, and it doesn't seem that they do a whole lot of talking, but because they're probably busy with what they're doing in their local so maybe that's what the Delta stewardship should be doing is is helping facilitate that and 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 allocating the scarce resources. Okay. Uh, Peter. <coughs> Thank you for those presentations. They were very clear. I did just have one question as you were talking here. So is the Delta transit system more vulnerable than other areas of the state or other counties and your colleagues elsewhere? Is it recognized as being a highly vulnerable area? Do you have some sort of ranking? The, the transit system, the actual the bus system you're talking about? No, th this would be f for the roads, the transport systems oh, through the, the Delta. Oh, the transportation system yeah. overall, the road yeah. system. Uh, it is. I, I mean, it, it, in, in my opinion, you know, there are some, some segments of the roads, of, of roads, you know, that may be vulnerable to... Uh, to sea level rise or some, you know, storm events, you know, particularly up in the northern part of the state. But uh, the delta is pretty much, I, I would think, you know, pretty close to ground, being ground zero in terms of being impacted due to sea level rise, you know, extreme more storm, storm events, flooding, et cetera. 
So within, you know, within the state. Yeah. And is that a sort of, is there any sort of formal ranking like through the ASCE and their infrastructure card? You know, it just seems this region that you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis is more vulnerable. And I just wondered if there was um, your way, whether you're looking at the federal level or the state level, that would prioritize these areas you know, if it, one, it's very vulnerable, and then on some of these transportation routes, it seems that there isn't a very easy fix. There isn't. And it all gets back down, I, I, I feel, to money. And, and so there just isn't enough to go around in a, Cal a state as large as California. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I agree. There's no, for no formal ranking. I, I would say for San Joaquin County, you know, uh, Sacramento, certainly too, to some extent, and and uh, to the west, but um, you know, there's there's a basically we're at there's a, a phrase we use often that we're at the bottom of the bathtub. So I'd say that we are more susceptible, particularly in the Delta region, to flooding. I mean, if you look at our neighboring counties, they don't have that threat. But you know, there are other areas that have other threats, you know, earthquakes or whatnot. So. All right. So I want to make sure we get to Sam. Yes. <laughs> Sam, you've been very patient. 